for you. I thought Yang Yang said you had a super cool little buddy to show us. Where is it? Uh, I don't know. Hmm. Did it just pop out of your tacit mark? Hmm. Smells good. So, is this how it first showed up when you guys were in the Norfolk Barrens? Yes, back then we... As I fought off those tacit discords, a burst of energy erupted from that statue. Two forces clashed and collided, and later, one of them emerged victorious, vanquishing the other in a violent clash. General Jian and Rover later told me it was this little thing coming out of Rover's body. It was blocking or even consuming the overflow of Thrinodian power. It reminded me of how Rover once absorbed frequency energy with his body in a similar fashion. So, we took him to the academy for a checkup with Baiju. Apparently, this little one is what we had detected before. It's a speculated space or organism hidden inside your body. Now we finally know. It shares similar frequencies with tacit discord's reverberations. It resembles an echo processed by the data bank stored inside your body instead of a terminal. In other words, it's your own echo, captured or absorbed at some point. Without you, it can't manifest. That's why Baiju couldn't confirm just how you absorbed that echo back then. Was it you? Was it the little one? Or maybe the two of you together? And Baiju discovered more after analyzing your spectrums. She found a new power source within you, similar to the Crownless, but even stronger. This power comes from the tacit discord you defeated in Norfolk Barrens. So, the excess energy this little thing had consumed somehow ended up in your body, available at your disposal. In other words, there is a deeper connection between the two of you. Or, according to Baiju, it's a convergent codependency. Uh, to put it simply, you are connected. While you are two separate individuals, your energies and vitals can affect each other, for better or for worse. You may even feel each other's emotions. The bond between you and this creature is symbiotic. As it strengthens, so do you. However, if one is harmed, the other suffers. Fortunately, since it can't ever leave your side, it's not an easy target for attackers. And if they do strike, it can seek shelter inside your body for safety. Okay, now that's pretty much it. Baija was going to explain it to you herself, but she has to go check on a newly appeared Sonora Sphere in Zhao Zhou. Wait, wait, wait. Mm. Uh, this is too much information for me to process. Let me get this straight. Mm. So, it helped Rover fight off the Thrinodian? Mm. Mm. Seriously? Mm. This teeny tiny thing could do that? <laughs> Seems unlikely. Hmm. Don't look down on me. You'll regret it when you learn what I'm capable of. That poker-faced researcher was absolutely shocked when she examined me. <laughs> Said I'm not just any Echo. I'm a super-duper cool one. Rarest of them all. <laughs> oh, actually, while those aren't Baiju's exact words, that is what she meant. She mentioned highly intelligent echoes that can act on their own in other countries. Said they are involved in every aspect of human life, 
with unique abilities beyond our imagination. Those echoes are rare, though. Neither I nor Baiji, an eco-acoustics expert, have ever seen one in person. But this little thing here? It could be one of those foreign echoes. Yeah, makes sense. Now we just gotta figure out where it came from. Who knows? We may find other cool echoes in that place. Well, both General Jian and Baija have confirmed it. No way they're lying. I'll admit, the thought of someone else having an echo inside them sounds pretty crazy to me. <laughs> but with you, anything's possible. You can absorb reverberations with just your hands, like the legend says. So maybe one day you just stumble upon this little thing and soaked it up like a sponge. Sounds feasible, I guess. So... Do you know where exactly he absorbed you? Huh? How am I supposed to know? Why don't you just ask him? Yeah. It happened before he lost all memories, so we have to ask you. But... Even if Echoes can have memories... They probably wouldn't remember things earlier than their first manifestation. I wonder if that's the case with this little one, too. Aha! Finally! Someone with common sense. That green-haired, serious guy asked me a similar question. Sorry to disappoint, but I really don't remember anything before I showed up. Hmm... Maybe... Maybe I was just sleeping inside him this whole time. So of course I don't remember. Sleeping? Seriously? It's been so long. All those happenings, all that fighting, and you didn't hear anything? Wow, that's... Your sleeping quality is really something. Ah, uh, so you've got privacy to be respected. <laughs> Don't worry. Your body's sound insulation is amazing. You can dive into it, and everything goes quiet. The only problem is, I never know when I'll wake up again. And when I do wake up, I get tired and hungry fast. So I have to crawl back in for more rest. <gasps> I know. It's all because... I'm not eating enough. That's why you kept disappearing. He went back to sleep from lack of energy. Makes sense. Regular echoes need to be powered by the terminal, too. Hmm. I thought you'd be really different from the usual ones we see. Turns out you share a lot in common. So you probably don't know your denomination or a nickname. No wonder everyone's been calling you the little one. Demnomination? What's that? The universally agreed terms for special echoes, like names for humans. They're named based on their characteristics, abilities, and places of origin. My denomination. It's... It's... I don't know. Do I not have a name at all? What? No way. No way. That's not fair. If all the special echoes have names, how can I not have one? I don't want to be called the little one all the time. It doesn't sound cool at all. How about this? You help me come up with a name, and I will let you have some of the food. Oh. <laughs> There's nothing left. Uh, next time. Next time, I'll definitely say some for you. Just, uh, just give me a name. Please. A name? 
now? Yes, I want it now. Look, your name's Tisha, your name's Yang Yang, and you... Uh, your name is... Heh, <laughs> that sounds interesting. Wait, didn't you forget everything? How do you still remember? With your old name and memories all gone, it's a good idea to go with a new one. It makes everything more convenient and represents a fresh start. Yeah! Exactly like she said! Every one of you has a name, and I want one for myself, too. I'm really not asking much. I just want a name that sounds a little cool, a little special, and epic, and super smoking. Names are a big deal, you know. Like once you have one, it's stuck with you for life. Gotta make sure it's a good one. Can't have people not scared of me when they hear it. No time for regrets here. That's true. Let's see. You want a cool one. What about Echo the Invincible? What do you say? Nah, nah, -uh. absolutely no. That's too straightforward. It's it's no better than calling me the little one. Hey, it makes every difference in the world. I am Echo the Invincible. That's what a hero play character would say as their transformation call. Or uh, or maybe since you can fly and you've got those long ears, why don't you call yourself a uh, Righteous Raptor or Valor Hawk? Or, Flying Fury? No. Absolutely no. Why do they all sound so ugh, cringy? Why? I love it when people call me the Jinjo Speedster. <laughs> Doesn't that sound awesome? Huh? <laughs> sure, if you say so. Anyway, they all sound like anything but my name. Absolutely no. Rover would come up with a good... Wait, why does it sound so random? You didn't just pick two random syllables, did you? So, is it because I've been saying absolutely no a lot? Hmm. Why is it suddenly so quiet? Is it not happy with the name? Why, though? Can't think of anything better that's catchy, impactful, and clever all at once. Uh, happy. Abra. Abraxas? What's wrong? What are you muttering about? Abra... what? Sounds like you're reading a spell. Uh, I don't know, but I just have this feeling that this is what my name should be. Okay, ready? Abby. I like the sound of that. <laughs> That's my name. Of course I like it. You came up with it for me. I was just trying to get used to it, that's all. Besides, I feel attached to this name now. <laughs> My name is Abby. You will not call me the little one again. Sure, we won't. Got it. Well, that didn't work out. 
I was hoping we could get some answers from the little... I mean, from Abby. But now we're back at square one. I really thought we could figure out where Abby came from. It might not lead us to other special echoes, but it's at least a starting point to uncover Rover's past. Then we'll have something to do before asking Madame Magistrate and our Sentinel about it again. Maybe we can start with Abby's special abilities instead. Each special echo has a unique ability. We can compare what Abby does with our records of other echoes to see where they came from. Besides, it was Abby's power that helped Rover defeat the Threnodian, I suppose. Why do you sound so unsure? Didn't you see it all with your own eyes? Hmm. Abby, can you show us again? I'm super curious how you did that. Who knows? We might learn something. Well, since you asked, I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> but this place is too crowded. Let's move to that open spot over there. on me. happen? Uh, just, just a little slip. That's all. I can do it. You gotta trust me. Back then, I just stood in front of him, and that big bad Threnodian monster thing just... just left. So, you didn't really do anything? Huh? No, I... I definitely did something. Like I said, I was asleep, and then all of a sudden, I smelled something really yummy coming closer and closer. Uh, it was like nothing I ever smelled before. I didn't have time to think. I just had to show up and reach out for it. So maybe Abby's power activates automatically under certain circumstances. Perhaps Abby can't control it yet. Yeah, it looks that way. You can't even hold your shape for very long yet. Hey, hey, hey! Stop looking down on me! Like I said, it was just a little slip. Really. But think about it. I just stood there and did nothing and ended up beating a Threnodian. Imagine what I could do if I actually tried. Hey, Rover, get behind me next time we run into anything, okay? I'll keep you safe. Promise. You're so real for that, Abby. <laughs> you bet. I said I'm super strong. I'll protect him. That's very reassuring to hear, but it seems we're stuck again. I can't think of anything else to check out. Knew it. Nothing about Rover is ever going to be easy to figure out. Maybe we should bring Baijap, Mr. Shangli, Yao, and all the researchers in Jinzhou? No, in the entire Huanglong together? They'll do a nice and thorough examination on Abby, and then... Absolutely no! I said no! Told that poker-faced researcher already! I'll make it clear. I am to stay with Rover. I agree. Abby cannot leave Rover's side. 
But we can't just trap him here for research. Where did you absorb Abby? What are Abby's powers? And what exactly happened between you two? There are so many questions we can't figure out yet. Our Sentinel Joy can look into the future. Nothing ever deviates from its predictions. It has already sort of guided you to the Norfolk Barons through Madame Magistrate's messages, right? Now that the Thranodian crisis is over, perhaps you can consult our Magistrate and our Sentinel again. I'm sure they can offer you some more useful guidance. Relax, relax. You have me now, remember? Meeting up with that Jinshi person, getting your memories back. I've got you. Speaking of that, so this Sentinel can predict the future? That sounds cool. The name Jue sounds pretty cool too. It's almost as cool as mine. What does it look like? Where is it? Since we're paying it a visit, this Sentinel should treat us with food, right? Mmm. I wonder how the food's gonna taste. Our Sentinel protects every one of us. Of course it's cool. But why are you talking about food again? Didn't you just stuff your face? What, is your stomach a black hole? I can't help it. I'm always starving. Rover, did you hear that? My stomach is growling. Oh, I'm so hungry. Oh, how about we go to that place we went to last time with Yang Yang and Chisha? I love their food so much. Mmm, yummy, yummy. <laughs> Uh, hello? Are you with me? You seem a bit distracted. With so much delicious food right in front of you, aren't you gonna try any? Well, if you're not interested, I'll gobble it all up. <laughs> <gasps> You've been absent-minded the whole day. Still bothered by that dream from last night? Wait. So you had a dream about the Sentinel? Like the one from your flashback when we saw the Sentinel statue after you lost your memory? <laughs> Hang on, so let me get this straight. The Sentinel swooshed you off to a mountain shaped like a dragon. And then there were all these bad things going on with lots and lots of tacit discords. But the Sentinel saved the day. How exactly did it protect everyone again? Oh, in your dream, it made the time different there. Yeah. The time in the mountains seemed to have slowed down from the outside, away from the tacit discords. The Sentinel must have created a barrier by manipulating the flow of time, keeping those monsters out. It was a safe haven from all the disturbances caused by the tacit discords, where people lived peacefully. Also, in my dream, I wasn't affected by the slow time and could freely move in and out of the barrier. It's no shock that you have awesome powers, being friends with me. Uh, what was that place you dreamed about called? I'm not entirely sure I heard it correctly. But in my dream, the Sentinel mentioned a place called Mount Firmament. Mount 
Firmament? Never heard of it. You've never heard of Mount Firmament? And I'm sure you're not from around here. Huh? Hold on! Did you just say Mount Firmament? Oh my! Did that echo just talk? Come on, man, relax. You don't hear an echo talking every day, but it's not that uncommon either. I heard there's a country called Re... Uh, Rhinus. What? Anyway, the echoes there are next level. Oh, you're not from around here? <laughs> well, that explains why you don't know about Mount Firmament. Legends say Mount Firmament is where the first people of Jinjo live. It looks like a giant statue of our sentinel Jue. I've never actually heard of anyone going to that place. They say those who try either get lost in the sea mist or never come back. If you're curious, just head southeast. Mount Firmament is on the east side of Whining Ix's Mire, and you can see it from a distance. The south. East. The past few days, especially this morning, I caught this unique smell from the southeast, from that mountain they just mentioned. It's like a strong energy pulsing through the air, but I can't quite put my finger on it. It feels kind of weird, though. Doesn't smell natural. Could it have anything to do with what you said? A place where time passes slowly? Hmm. Do you want to go check it out? I had a flashback about seeing their sentinel. Perhaps that happened on Mount Firmament. I can feel an unknown force guiding me, urging me to go there and find something. Jinchi said she'll go search for the Sentinel and update me on its whereabouts. But so far, I've not heard anything from the City Hall yet. Then shall we go check it out together? It feels really suspicious. Greetings, Rover. What can I help you with today? I regret to inform you that Madam Magistrate is not in the City Hall. She has left for Mount Firmament. In fact, we have not heard back from her for days. Unfortunately, no. Please keep this confidential. The situation in Jinzhou is still unstable after our battle with the Thrinodian. We must limit discussion of the Magistrate's whereabouts to a select few. When we captured Scar, he claimed that the Praxidus had imprisoned our Sentinel. It was around the same time that Madam Magistrate lost track of Sentinel Jue. If our Sentinel is truly in danger, or... If someone with malicious intent obtains this information, the potential consequences could be as catastrophic as the previous Thronodian invasion. In order to investigate the Sentinel's whereabouts, Madam Magistrate has left for Mount Firmament, its last recorded location. Madam Magistrate traveled to Mount Firmament alone. The looming threat of the Thronodian discouraged any additional diversion of human resources. Furthermore, when it comes to the Sentinel, force is not a viable solution.
Madam Magistrate trusts you. It is beyond my authorization to meddle in your decisions. However, the landscape around Mount Firmament is complex. One must be accompanied by a special wayfinder to navigate safely. That's all I know. Currently, she's likely at the ferry terminal in Whining Ix's mire. I'll reach out to her. To learn more about Mount Firmament, you can meet her at the ferry. I lack the same level of understanding of the situation there as she does. I trust Madam Magistrate's decisions. I will do my utmost to handle the public matters on her behalf while she is away. I just... This worry about her safety won't leave me. In her last video message, I could tell she seemed weaker than usual, despite her efforts to maintain composure. Madam Magistrate's situation might not be optimistic. Rover, Mount Firmament is a dangerous place. Please take care. I have sent the coordinates to your terminal. Thank you for your kind help. I pray you will both return safely. I'm here! Hey, did you notice how the mountain has a strangely pleasant smell? Hmm, it doesn't look edible though. Not that I'm hungry or anything. I just tend to doze off easily. Feels like my body can only process what I consume while sleeping. And don't worry, if there's any danger coming your way, I'll wake up like clockwork, just like last time. Well, unless there's nothing that can even remotely challenge you. In that case, I probably won't wake up. Let's head to the ferry. Hmm. Mount Firmament. Our Wayfinder should have plenty information to share. Trapped here by the rain? No need for thanks. We're about to embark on a journey together, Rover. I am Chun Li, your wayfinder. Don't worry. The rain won't last much longer. Our destination lies just beyond it. Rover, what do you know about Mount Firmament? There is a certain folk tale. Have you heard of it? While hiking in the mountains, a woodcutter came upon two people playing Weichi and became enthralled with their game. Upon his return home, he found a world transformed. Everything was different, as if in a new reality. That mountain was a secret realm where time worked differently. The woodcutter only spent half a day inside, but outside, a century had passed. Mount Firmament is such a place. But unlike this folktale, 
There is a price to pay for entering and exiting its grounds. If I spend a full day in the mountains, ten days will be taken off my lifespan upon my leaving, reflecting the actual time that is passed outside. Not to mention, the situation on Mount Firmament right now is probably even more complex than before. The strange time patterns of Mount Firmament are tied to the Sentinel's temporal mandate. Time ebbs and flows at its will. If the Fraxidus really has imprisoned our Sentinel, causing it to lose control of its powers, that could explain the temporal disruptions. Which means Mount Firmament is basically a dead end, with no way out. Lifespan is not the top of my concerns. If you've decided to venture there, I'll join you as your Wayfinder. Jin Shi has stayed on Mount Firmament for too long. She doesn't miss a thing, does she? Before Jinshi left for Mount Firmament, scales began appearing on her body, and her resonance ability was weakening. Those signs pointed to a dire situation for the Sentinel as well. That's why I must lead you there. You might have the key to solving our dilemma. You're here because I invited you. Sanhua was instructed to disclose my whereabouts if you ever went to City Hall and asked about Jin Shi. It's no surprise that you went to City Hall for answers, considering your memory loss and Jin Shi's prolonged absence. I need to tell you the truth, because you've been the top priority, no, the sole concern of our enemy, the Fraxidus. That overseer tried everything to sway you and make you join their side before our battle with the reviving Thranodian. It's a clear sign that your involvement could disrupt their plans, especially at Mount Firmament. Records at the Grand Library tell a tale of someone who dared to enter Mount Firmament after the Sentinel's descent, and they emerged unscathed, as if time had no hold on them. They were also said to have stood alongside the Sentinel. And here before me stands someone who bears an uncanny resemblance to that very individual. Is it you? If not you, who else could it be? It took me some effort to finally reach this conclusion. Rover, the journey ahead is filled with danger at every turn. Once we venture into the mountains, there's no turning back. Are you sure you still want to join me?
As your Wayfinder, I'll lead you to your destination. What you do after that is entirely up to you. The rain is subsiding, and the sky will soon clear. It's time for us to head out. We're at the base of Mount Firmament, but we won't enter the temporal barrier until we cross the luminous shore. Shall we proceed? The storm is coming. Some people must be itching to pounce. The bridge has broken. Judging by its design and intricate details, it must be a creation of the Court of Savante. This is what they call a Chronos Order. It mimics the Sentinel's temporal mandate, able to reverse small-scale events and restore objects to their previous state. My master once told me about the Court of Savante and their fearless quest to unravel the mysteries of Mount Firmament, risking all in their pursuit of understanding its strange flow of time. Their dedication bore fruit in the form of fascinating inventions, such as this Kronos Order. But it doesn't add up. Why hasn't this brilliant invention spread beyond Mount Firmament? This Kronos Order was built beyond the Temporal Barrier, so its creator must have already paid the price for leaving. But even if they died, there are countless other CSC members who could replicate it. How did such advanced technology become lost? Or, do these Chronos Orders stop functioning once they are removed from Mount Firmament? This Chronos Order, weathered though it may appear, bears no signs of neglect. Someone has tended to it diligently. Let's give it a try.
The entrance is sealed. It's the photon barrier. Another invention from the court of Savante. Specific steps must be followed to undo the barrier. Rover, I'll guide you. Use long-range weapons on the photon vaults to cut off its energy. Once we've reached the cave's end, we'll enter the domain of Mount Firmament. Proceed with caution. So it can't hurt me. <gasps> Time on Mount Firmament used to simply flow slower than in the outside world. Visitors were safe as long as they remained within the temporal barrier. But what we're seeing now is different. The flow of time has gone haywire. This is what we call temporal disruptions. What was once slow and steady has become chaotic and turbulent. Some areas are frozen in time, while others speed up or slow down unpredictably. No one knows how much they'll age after leaving Mount Firmament. But aging from youth to old age may be a blessing compared to the unknown fate that awaits. Leaving Mount Firmament could turn any mortal to dust in just a moment. Such is the power of time within its walls. These poor creatures, trapped in the temporal disruption, are the most pitiful of all. Their bodies and minds have been ravaged by the chaotic time, leaving them in unimaginable suffering. So, it looks like the Fraxidus did manage to capture our Sentinel, leading to the temporal disruptions we are facing now. I had wished that my theories would turn out wrong. As expected, my terminal isn't working. We can't reach Jinshi. The temporal disruption is preventing it from functioning. We can't waste a moment. Jinshi's fate isn't the only one at stake. All the inhabitants of Mount Firmament are in danger. We need to hurry to Hongzhen, a town nestled at the heart of Mount Firmament. Jinshi would likely pass through there on her search for the Sentinel. What's the matter? You dreamed of Hongzhen? It sounds like you did dream of this place. What you just described closely aligns with the accounts documented in our Grand Library. Over a century ago, 
A vast horde of tacit discords invaded Huang Long. Hong Jin suffered greatly during that onslaught. Thankfully, the Sentinel descended, manipulating time to erect a protective barrier, keeping those monsters at bay. Rover, perhaps that dream is more than just a dream. It could be a glimpse into your own past, and a guiding light for the future. Hongjin is a pivotal location, linking various parts of Mount Firmament. With the Fraxidus now targeting us, they'll seize any opportunity to intercept our path. But every trap has its weak points. Someone has used their resonance ability here, but it feels... Different from the Fraxidus aggression. It's Jinshi. And it seems like she used it in a dire situation. Could it be related to the people of Hongzhen? The traces lead deeper into the heart of Hongzhen. Let's keep moving. Don't let your guard down. Traces end here. Let's search the Someone fought here against those Fraxidus. Must be Jinshi. Her trails led to this location. Using her resonance ability too much would only worsen her condition. But she must have had a reason. Was she helping the people of Hongzhen find refuge? Cheng Li, there are traces here. They're pointing north. Let's proceed in that direction. Traces disappear by the calm. Rover, we need to keep an eye out for anything unusual. The vase on the stone table seems rather peculiar. There's something behind the waterfall. Let's go take a look. Another photon barrier. Three photon vaults to break. We'll reuse ranged attacks. You two, halt! Hold on. Lady Xingyi! Relax, there are honored guests. No need to be tense. In a single day, we've greeted both the Magistrate of Jinzhou and her trusted counselor in Hongzhen. I can only assume something significant happened. It's been a while, Chang Li. I heard you step down from your position and move to the countryside. And now here we are, meeting again after all this time. 
in such unfortunate circumstances. For years, I live secluded, no longer concerning myself with the matters beyond Hongzheng. But the current situation in Jinzhou is volatile. It has reunited us in an unpredictable moment. And you, young sir? What shall I call you? My name is Xin Yi. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Please follow me this way. It's not safe to talk here. I believe you are here for Magistrate Jin Shi. The Magistrate left Hong Zhen about 15 minutes ago. She should be at the Truth Seekers Pass now. That's what they call it in Hong Zhen. You might know it better as the ruins of a Court of Savante facility. Lady Xinyi, please elaborate. Madam Magistrate, are you... I'm fine. How's the situation? Have we evacuated all the civilians? Yes. Remaining civilians have been counted and escorted to safety. Good. These hidden chambers should provide some much needed shelter for them to rest a little. Despite being the Sentinel's appointed resonator, I haven't been able to sense its presence for some time now. I can feel my resonance ability waning, and I get my power from the Sentinel. This can only mean one thing. The Sentinel's condition is getting worse. Lady Xing Yi, I need to know where the Sentinel was last seen. I can only fix the temporal disruption within a confined radius. It's already pushing my limits to keep this small pocket of space secure. Mount Firmament is in serious trouble, and we can't waste any more time. We need our Sentinel to stabilize the time flow. The Sentinel was last seen flying towards Mianlun Chamber, where it would normally rest. The Fraxidus likely swarmed it soon after. But little did they know, we had a defense system in place, built with the help of the Court of Savante. It was reactivated as soon as our Sentinel made it back inside. This mechanism has allowed us to locate their troops, and we've already eliminated some of them outside the Mianlun chamber. To get inside Mianlun chamber, we have to find the cipher key in Truth Seeker's Pass and unseal it with the Keyforge. Understood. I will go bring back the cipher key. You are injured. 
Please, rest and leave it to me. The Fraxidus will most likely attack this place once I leave. You must stay here and guard it. I implore you, Xingyi. Help me keep our people safe. Yes, I will, Madam Magistrate. Before I headed to Mount Firmament, the Fraxidus revealed a prophecy from our Sentinel. A fateful clash between the Sentinel and myself that would shape the fate of our city. I never intended to believe their baseless claims, but I was not surprised to hear it. The Sentinel had told me long ago that there would come a day when I surpass it in power. A day when the humans of Jinjo take control of their own destiny. Once we save the Sentinel from danger, I intend to have a serious conversation with it about this prophecy. And then she left. There's still one thing that doesn't add up. How did the Fraxidus kidnap our Sentinel? The Mianlong Chamber was once renovated by the court of Savante. Do you think their research could be involved somehow? I'll look into what you said, but once we have the cipher key, the Mianlun Chamber will be left vulnerable to the Fraxidus' potential retaliation. We must keep them at bay. Rover and I are headed to the Truth Seekers Pass to meet up with Jing Shi. We'll distract the Fraxidus main forces, giving you an opportunity to stage your ambush. And the locals will handle the rest. I will send some men to open up the side exit for you. Head south and keep walking a couple of minutes, and you will see the Truth Seekers pass downstream. Thank you, Lady Xingyi. Please, leave it to us. In this place she was born, and in this place she returns. Our Magistrate's fate is bound to Mount Firmament. Jin Shi know each other? Jin Shi was chosen as a baby for her resonance ability and raised in City Hall to become the Sentinel's appointed resonator. All the government workers there helped care for and teach her at some point, including Lady Xing Yi. She grew up with immense responsibilities, forced to suppress her true nature from a young age. Thinking back, Jin Shi was only a teenage girl when she became the Magistrate. She has been burdened with unimaginable weight that most cannot fathom. I assume this is the Truth Seeker's Pass Xing Yi mentioned. Yes. This should be another Chronos Order. It should work in similar ways with the one we saw near the Luminous Shore. The entrance is built on that cliff, and it's been blocked. We will need to break the three photon vaults with ranged attacks first. Hmm. Nothing. I was wondering, how did the Court of Savante create such an advanced mechanism using the Sentinel's power? Mortals aren't supposed to be able to comprehend it. 
I've never heard of any human civilization having the ability to manipulate time. Unless the Sentinel willingly taught them. But why? We need to focus on items related to the court of Savante in Truthseeker's Pass. Maybe we can find some clues there. glowing patterns on that gate. It's a flare crest. Yes, the flare crests have a complex structure, but they can be deciphered with patience. See how each star represents a flare stone? That mechanism we accidentally solved earlier should be one of them. Yes, we still need the other two flare stones to open it. Wait. The blood and scales here. It's Jinshi. She is likely teetering on the edge of overclocking now. We are running out of time. The Sentinel situation is worse than we thought. It had already sustained severe injuries when it descended upon Mount Firmament. With one of the temporal programs lost, it no longer had the power to restore time. Instead, it could only stop and rewind it. So the Sentinel protected Hongjin with its power, but it couldn't return things back to normal. It would seem so. According to their theories, the Sentinel's injury would worsen over time. And if the Sentinel perishes, the temporal disruptions will spiral out of control, engulfing all of Jinzhou. <sighs> so the Fraxidus just added a pinch of salt to the already gaping wounds on Mount Firmament. There's nothing we can do. At least that's what it says in these records. Only the Mianlong Chamber can provide temporary relief for the Sentinel, but it won't heal it completely. In the end, the Sentinel and a peculiar visitor who is immune to time disruptions would have to come up with a last resort. The Sentinel couldn't be fixed, so they decided to replicate its power onto a resonator through induced resonance. Their experiments resulted in the first Chronos Order, a man-made resonance object. No, a Chronos Order can only rewind time within a narrow range. It's no match for the Sentinel's immense power. We are getting closer and closer to the truth. Two more flare stones left. Everything aside, first we must find Jinshi.
Is that so? So this file confirms that the Kronos Orders are artificial resonance objects. They activate when hit with a strong impact to create the corresponding resonance effects. And this also answers my previous question. The Kronos Orders rewind time through resonating with the Sentinel. No, it was nowhere near enough. The Kronos Orders shut down once they are removed from the Sentinel's range or the abnormal time flow on Mount Firmament. Plus, as artificial resonance objects, their capacity is limited. According to the Court of Savante researchers, there was a hypothesis that could potentially make them more powerful, the Second Resonance Awakening Hypothesis, which states the collision between two resonating frequencies might cause a Second Resonance Awakening. Yes, that fight has to happen to trigger a Second Resonance Awakening for Jinshi, so she may exert even stronger resonance abilities, ones that allow her to restore the flow of time. Countless Kronos Orders were made to collide with the Sentinel's frequencies, but they were no match. All the machines turned to dust. One Kronos Order briefly showed the power to restore time before breaking apart. This proved that a second awakening can indeed improve resonance ability. The research log mentioned that all Kronos Orders were working in an overdrive mode. It's similar to how human resonators experience overclocking, they wrote. Overclocking happens when a resonator overexerts their ability. And this researcher who wrote this suggests that it might be the key to triggering a second awakening. No, it's not. Exhausting oneself will only result in destruction. In addition, I noticed another detail in these records. The Kronos Orders required manual control, while the Sentinel Jue appeared to be under someone else's command. In the only incident of success, just as the Kronos Order was about to break down, that peculiar visitor gave an order to the Sentinel, and the Sentinel successfully transferred some kind of energy to the Kronos Order thanks to that order. Rover. Do you have an idea? Jinchi. Don't worry. Rover is special. The temporal disruption can't hurt him. I... <coughs> but... Cheng Li, you're... Shh. I gave my word to be your pawn, and I intend to keep it. As your teacher and courtier, it is only right for me to do so. And let's not forget, without me playing the Wayfinder for Rover, we wouldn't even have him here. Rover has a strong connection to this place. You need his help to resolve Mount Firmament's crisis. But we already owe Rover a lot. As we headed toward Mount Firmament, Rover mentioned a strange dream he had. It may have been a flashback of his lost memories. Rover, Jue, and Mount Firmament, 
There must be some kind of crucial connection between the three. Rover also has his own reasons for being here. I see. Rover, I will do everything I can to rescue the Sentinel as soon as possible. And we can finally talk to it in person. It will surely have the answers you want. Let's cut to the chase. What did you find in Truthseeker's past, Jinchi? According to the Court of Savante's records, the Sentinel was already injured upon its arrival at Mount Firmament. As time passed and its condition worsened, the flow of time became unstable here, causing temporal disruptions that could potentially threaten Jinjo. Only the Sentinel's appointed Resonator can restore its temporal mandate. Their records indicate a solution. To reverse the rapid aging effect from temporal disruptions, I must deliberately collide with the Sentinel's resonance power during combat, triggering my second resonance awakening. That will enhance my power beyond its limits. Let's say you can achieve all that, but Chenshi, do you understand what is at stake for yourself? I understand. I share a resonance connection with Jue, but I never took the time to truly get to know it. I've been blind to its suffering for so long. Sentinel Jue has been guiding us since the city's founding with its wise words and well-crafted decisions. The temporal disruptions we face are just a side effect of its efforts to protect local people. Without the Sentinel blocking out tacit discords through its time manipulation power, Jinjo would be a barren wasteland today. So what do you plan to do, Jinshi? If the Sentinel's condition is indeed incurable, Nobody knows how far the temporal disruptions will continue to spread. Today it's Mount Firmament, but tomorrow it could be all of Jinjo. I... I will. If it truly comes down to that, I'll fulfill Jue's prophecy myself. It's the only way to save Mount Firmament, protect Jinjo, and help the Sentinel. Have you thought about the consequences, Jinshi? Trying to trigger a second awakening by fighting the Sentinel, it could make you overclock at any moment. We both know what that means. You could lose your mind forever, or even disintegrate into dust. You don't want to end up like those Chronosorters, shredded under immense pressure. On top of that, do you honestly believe you can fight in your current condition? I can see right through your facade, Jinshi. You're essentially committing suicide at this point. You're one to talk, my teacher. I learn from the best. When have you ever backed down from risking your life for what you believe in? Oh? I don't remember ever teaching you that. We all die eventually, but we need to stay alive as long as we can to achieve more. Jinshi, you must live and inherit the Sentinel's power. Then you can save and protect these people for years to come. Cheng Li... I... 
Jinshi, I don't intend to stop you. I know you've made up your mind. That's why I brought Rover here. You may have already guessed it. Rover is indeed the hero who fought by our sentinel's side during Jinjo's early days. He is also the mysterious visitor spoken of in tales about Mount Firmament. All evidence we've gathered points to this being true. If anyone can help us with the situation at Mount Firmament, it must be Rover. Thank you, my teacher. Jingxi will keep your words in mind. Lastly, we still don't know for sure how the Fraxidus is keeping our Sentinel trapped. This will determine if you can actually meet it face to face. Yes, it could be any of these scenarios. Lady Xingyi is already on the case. We should get an answer soon. The cipher key should be inside the stone chamber behind its entrance gate. There is one more flare stone to work out. Let's get moving. Rover, take good care of the cipher key. I'm leaving the rest to you and Jinji. Please don't forget, I am your wayfinder. I journeyed with you into the mountains to ensure you meet up with Jinshi. From this point onward, I will be counting on you both to go and confront the Sentinel. This is all I can do for you. I'm here to guide, not intervene. The path is yours to choose. Not to mention, the Fraxidus has been pestering us non-stop. You'll need someone to keep them at bay. Yes, they've been constantly watching you, interested in your every move. They can never seem to take their eyes off of you. By all means, please carry on without me. As for myself... I have a more fitting location to make my contributions from. Oh, speak of the devils. not how we greet people here. Allow me to demonstrate the proper etiquette. Those artificers are nothing to worry about. 
Don't worry. Chen Li has her plans. I don't believe we will run into more ambushes on the way. The Mianlung Chamber is open now. You can proceed inside. Before you go, there's something important I need to tell you. Chang Li was right. They used the Court of Cervantes' research to trap our sentinel in its resting chamber. They used the Chronosorters. Our captured artificer revealed that the Fraxidas sent a death squad to invade Mount Firmament. They had a twofold plan. First, to place the Chronosorter in the Mianlung chamber while it was still operational. And second, to lure the Sentinel back to Mount Firmament. Although their death squad was no match for the Sentinel, by forcing its hand, the powerful resonance ability of the Sentinel would clash with the energy of the Chronosorter. This would ultimately cause harm to itself. What if the Fraxidus modified those Chronosorters? A whole bunch of them pushed to their limits, all working together to deliver one massive blow. But not even that was enough to take down the Sentinel. After the first hit, they set up modified flare crests in the Mianlung chamber to form a special force field along with those chrono sorters. It prevented the Sentinel from replenishing energy, and eventually, restricted its movement and perception. So, we must free the Sentinel from that force field first. It would be a task more complicated than it sounds. The people of Hongzhen have lived with the Sentinel for generations. We can usually tell if it's in good shape or not. But now, the Fraxidus want to capture the Sentinel. They won't just stop at Mount Firmament. Madam Magistrate, I'm sure you didn't come here just for the Sentinel. Please tell us what you know, Madam Magistrate. Yes, I will tell you everything. So the Sentinel is actually injured, and it's been getting worse. The Fraxidus attacked while it hasn't healed yet. Their plans are devious as always. Madam Magistrate, you've already laid out this plan so far. It's always a challenge to decipher the Sentinel's intentions. But there were many theories about it in City Hall at the time. I couldn't fathom why it went through such great lengths to retrieve you from Mount Firmament and raise you within our walls. But now that I reflect on it, perhaps the Sentinel saw in you the potential to one day restore the temporal program and ensure the survival of Jin Zhou's inhabitants. I just never thought you'd be willing to follow through with that prophecy. It was here on this very mountain that I first encountered the Sentinel. 
Back then, I was too young to remember anything. Even the image of Mount Firmament has slipped from my mind. But this time, as soon as I stood at the base of Mount Firmament, I felt a wave of recognition wash over me. Memories long buried resurfaced with sudden clarity. Lady Xingyi, I was born with my life, my everything connected to our Sentinel. But my duty as its appointed resonator is not the only reason for my decision. I'm following the heart of my younger self before I became Jinxi. The girl who used to laugh with pure joy as she felt the snow from Mount Firmament on her face. I am a seed, born on Mount Firmament, carried by the wind to every corner of Jinzhou. But now, I have returned to my place of origin. It's time for me to take root and grow into something greater. <sighs> no matter what happens or what choices you make, please remember, the people of Hongzhen will always have your back. Mount Firmament has been stagnant for eternity. Perhaps a sudden crack of lightning is what we need to break through the fog of uncertainty that has lingered over us for far too long. Once you pass through Hongzhen, Keep your eyes open for a cave on the northern cliff. That will lead you to a shortcut towards Mianlun Chamber. The place is directly under Mount Firmament's iconic loon-shaped cliff. I wish you two the best of luck. the Mian Long Chamber. We should now help the Sentinel break free from the Flare Crest Spines. Chronosorters nearby may have frozen this body of water and time. Or it could have been caused by the temporal disruptions here. Either way, we can use it to our advantage. We can walk over the water now. We are too far away to see what's going on inside. Let's go. I still need more information to determine what we should do next. I can feel the Sentinel's presence inside. But it's not responding. Crest. The Sentinel is telling us we need to find the three flare stones corresponding to the flare crest. Then we will be able to lift the confinement set by the Fraxidus. But I'm not seeing any flare stones or any kind of entrance to another chamber. There seems to be something underwater. Let's start with the Chrono Sorter here. Once, tacit discords terrorized the land. The, the region of Jinzhou was under siege. 
a mother and her newborn child were hiding in ruins, trying to avoid the deadly creatures. They weren't safe for long, as the tacit discord found them. The mother sacrificed herself to protect her child. But with her gone, it was difficult for the newborn to survive. In a couple of minutes, its loud cries gradually died out. Fortunately, the newborn's cries echoed through the forest with a unique resonance that reached the ears of the mighty Sentinel. With a burst of energy, our Sentinel dispelled the surrounding evils. But sadly, it was too late. That night, Mount Firmament shook with the roars of a lung, and dark clouds gathered. The Sentinel returned with a dead infant in its embrace. As if by magic, somber clouds parted, and shooting stars lit up the sky. With Mount Firmament's unique flow of time, the Sentinel brought the deceased infant back to life. The resurrected infant became known as, as the, the Sentinel's Sentinel. appointed resonator and went on to become the magistrate of Jinjo. in Jinjo my whole life and never ventured into Hongjen. Yet even I know of the legend. To me, Jue is more than just our sentinel or a revered divine being. It raised me and saved me from certain death. I've been thinking about it on our way here. If the sentinel predicted our fight why would it even bother saving me in the first place? Now I understand why. Because I am the Sentinel's resonator. I may not have any extraordinary abilities, but I do possess the temporal program that it accidentally lost. If Jinju ever faces a similar time crisis, I... I might be the only one who can set things right. In our Sentinel's prediction, the battle between us is supposed to happen in the distant future. It had been waiting for an opportunity, a right moment to tell me the truth. That's why it didn't explain. Now may not be the opportunity the Sentinel has been waiting for, but my body cannot hold up much longer. I have to go and face it while I still can, to learn about the truth or complete our destined battle. Give up. My duty. I never thought about it. To be honest, I did doubt myself many times. It was the endless kindness of you, Chung Li, Xing Yi, and everyone in Jinzhou that gave me the courage to push on. Even Jue's decision to bring me back to life, whether out of pity or not, I am truly grateful. The thought of it warms my heart every time. Jinjo holds everything that's dear to me. Even without the title of Magistrate, I could never leave Jinjo behind.
I'm okay. The pain I'm feeling is nothing compared to those trapped in the temporal disruptions. I must find the Sentinel as soon as possible. We draw from the same source of power. Saving it means saving myself. If there is truly no other option in the end, then I will have to fight it. I refuse to back down. I will fight. To protect the Sentinel and to defend Jin Zhou. One life may be lost, but many will be saved. If it means keeping everyone safe, then I have no regrets giving my own life. But let me make one thing clear. I am not planning on dying yet. I am here to fight for a chance at survival, no matter how slim that chance may be. We're not in a situation where death is our only option, are we? Thank you for placing your trust in me. Come to think of it, many good things have happened to me since you arrived in Jinjo. Thank you, Rover. My teacher Chung Li told me it's up to both of us to solve the crisis at Mount Firmament. As I know you have a special connection with our Sentinel, I need your support in this decision. But don't worry, I'm prepared. This isn't about succumbing to destiny, it's about embracing it fully. I am grateful to have you by my side through it all. Jinji, it has been quite some time. And greetings, Lord Arbiter. Or should one address you as Rover now? Hm. One cannot discern the cause of your arrival. Yet its significance heralds Jinjo's fateful juncture. Shall a child who has lost their memories take up arms and fight for their fate? Or shall they retreat to their cradle and slumber? The seed of the future shall be sown in this very moment. Once the situation settles, an explanation shall be provided. For now, one must implore you to simply engage, decide, and observe. Jinji, 
Your journey has been an arduous one. Aside from aging one in this predicament, surely there are other inquiries you wish to make. I cannot bring myself to ask for more. All I seek is the truth. Mount Firmament is in grave danger. Regarding the temporal mandate and your injuries, please do not keep the truth from me any longer. One understands your concerns. The timing may not be optimal for this disclosure. Yet, in the midst of crisis, one must act with expedience. For one will soon perish. Oh. One such as this, of immortal nature, is designed to endure for all time. Yet one suffered severe harm in ancient times, and now relies on the Myanlong Chamber for survival. This is not the optimal solution. For a long time, one has had to use this chamber to replenish energy, hoping to delay the inevitable doom. Yet fate cannot be defied. The Fraxidus have conspired against this one. Now, the injury only worsens. The Myanlong Chamber can no longer prolong one's life. Jinjo. The city of Jinjo will be no more. Ever since one descended upon Mount Firmament, using the power of temporal mandate to repel tacit discords, time has been in disarray within this location. The fate of Jinjo was sealed from that moment on. Over the past millennia, one has defied the laws of nature and sustained Jinjo at the cost of one's own life force. Otherwise, the temporal disruption would wreak havoc not only on Mount Firmament, but on the entire region of Jinjo. If this were to happen, all life will be engulfed in a chaotic storm of twisted time flow. Jinjo shall forever remain frozen in time. The past and the future melt into one, rendering life indistinguishable from death. The ceremonial rituals and endless battles persist, intertwining joy and sorrow into an eternal blur. All inhabitants of Jinjo shall endure this perpetual fate until time itself ceases to exist. It is this one's own doing, and one must put an end to it. In the coming days, one will exert every ounce of strength to freeze the time in Jinjo at the cost of one's remaining life. In that moment, Jinjo will fall into stillness, but not perish. In the distant future, the people of Wanglong may discover a method to rescue Jinjo. 
Is there truly nothing else we can do? This is not the optimal solution, but it suffices as an option. Please, forgive me, but I cannot do as you say. A decade, a century... What if nobody comes up with a solution? By that time, the world will have turned its back on this forgotten city. And who would be willing to spend precious resources rescuing a small city in a far-off corner of the world? Jinjo's fate deserves better than an uncertain future. Whilst one may not live to witness the future, one can still envision endless possibilities yet to come. In my deduction, this method proves to be the most effective and stable. Magistrate Jinji, as you express doubts, pray tell how do you propose to solve this issue? The flow of time upon Mount Firmament is in disarray and it can only be contained through one's utmost effort. If one does not freeze the time now, the situation in Jinjo shall surely worsen a hundredfold, or even a thousandfold, after one's passing. He once predicted a destined battle between us. Is it true? Correct. I was lost at first, struggling to grasp the prophecy's meaning. Only when I learned of your actions alongside the court of Savante did it all become clear. By clashing two resonating powers, a second resonance awakening can be induced. Through this, I am able to push my resonance ability beyond its limits and invoke the temporal mandate to restore the flow of time. Though I will be forced to raise my blade against you. Ridiculous! If you clash with my resonance power, even the smallest mistake will result in overclocking and leave you nothing but an empty husk. You are well aware of its excruciating effects. The pain you feel now is but a faint scratch in comparison to its true torment. Moreover, you will be trapped within the fissures of time itself. Your being will be relentlessly shredded and mended day after day, denied any respite for eternity. But I can restore the errors in the flow of time. Isn't that why you saved me all those years ago? I'm just doing what you've been doing all along. Going against fate to keep Jinjo safe. Jinshi, you are given one last opportunity. Let me freeze the time, and I can ensure your safety. You are only here to witness before the right time arrives. But 
You are not compelled to remain idle. Should you intervene, you may augment Jinshi's odds of survival by a fraction. Command me to transfer my temporal mandate access to Jinshi at the right moment. The moment of her resonance ability's depletion, when she is teetering on the brink of overclocking and near death, then we may still save her life. Miss that moment by even the slightest margin, and Jinshi's fate will be sealed. I should have died a long time ago. But I was lucky enough to be saved by you. Allowing me the chance to see the glittering lights of Jinjo for myself. You rewinded time to save me. I am responsible. Jinjo is my home. If it's ever in danger, I will do everything in my power to protect what I hold dear. Even at the cost of my own life. Such a valiant speech. Do you know the weight of this decision? I understand your concerns. I will reach my second awakening with our destined confrontation. And restore the time flow. Are you willing to bet on me? Restore the time flow? Pray, from where does this confidence arise? You are my resonator, but your strength is only a fraction of mine. There is little chance for you to retreat unscathed. But I can at least win some hope for our people. Even if it costs me my soul, my everything, I cannot die without trying. I may only bear your power for a fleeting moment. It's all I need to secure a better future for Jin Jo, defying all of your predictions. And I can keep you safe. If there is anyone who can face you in a fight, that person has to be your resonator. I will be your final winning move in this game. <laughs> Are you truly ready to challenge a being worshipped by your kind? Will you not regret it when you meet your bitter demise? I will not regret it. No matter what. Very well, Magistrate of Genjo. Come to the summit! Demonstrate your prowess! Show me how you shall be my triumphant ace! <laughs> Lord Arbiter, one is curious about your choice this time. Wherever the tides may take us, you will bear witness to our fight. <laughs> Government must be guided by virtue. Chi, do you keep this in mind? Yes. Virtue must come first. Politics, commerce, it all must serve the people. From now on, you shall be known as Jinshi, bearing Jinjo's name as your own. What do you think of this world? Like... here. 
darkness clings, but lights flicker in the gloom. A guiding light in the silhouette. That's why they stand out so brightly against the darkness. This entrance leads to one Sonoro Sphere. Magistrate Jinchi, one shall await you there. Rover, this battle is related to the fate of Jinjo, and only you can open this Sonoro Sphere. The key to Jinjo's future lies in your hands. If I open it, Jinshi is bound to face you in the ultimate battle. The ideal outcome would be for her to absorb your power at the critical moment and restore the time flow without any loss of life. But there's a chance that she could push herself too far and end up dying from overclocking. Though, if I do nothing, you'll use your remaining power to freeze all of Jinjo in time. Correct. Now, please let us know your choice. Rover. I have been preparing for this moment. Leaving Jinjo behind fills me with regret. Knowing I may never again bask in its glorious sunshine, or witness the purity of its snowflakes. But that's why I'm here. To ensure that others can still experience the wonders of nature. Our city has a rich history, with generations witnessing endless sunrises and sunsets at the border. Our people have sacrificed their blood and tears to protect Huang Lung's safety. They deserve a bright future. I want to protect Jinjo in my own way. As Jinshi, as a citizen of Jinjo, and as Jinjo's magistrate. Let's begin. Magistrate Jinshi. However, you are still a long way from inheriting my power. Back down now, 
while you still can. I've made up my mind, and I will not back down. He once said it's not easy to become a candle of light, but I still want to try. I want to see if I can ignite a spark of hope for Jinjo. One transfer the temporal mandate to Jin Shi. This one has heard your decision. has been carried out as you instructed. Jinji, one shall honor one's promise and restore Jinjo's future to you and its people. Jinshi has recovered. One will soon send her back to Jinjo for recuperation. Please do not worry. With all matters resolved, as per the agreement, it is time for one to address it. One is prepared to answer any inquiries you may have. I am Jue the Sentinel, the guide of Jinjo's civilization. Everything about Jinjo has been stored in my mind. You are my arbiter and my former master. 
In bygone days, I stood by your side as you established Jinjo City. You tasked me with safeguarding its prosperity. This one begs your pardon, for it is not all-knowing. All my knowledge came from you. One is prepared to answer any inquiries you may have. In the past, one was granted the key to that Sonoro Sphere by your hand. You said you planned to participate in history, to make choices and witness the development of civilizations. One had previously requested for permission to transfer the temporal mandate to Jinshi, as that is how one is designed to function. Every ounce of my existence, from life to death, and even the passing on of power, is subject to your approval. One is prepared to answer any inquiries you may have. Since Jinji has inherited my power, the temporal programs are now complete. Jinjo is no longer under threat. Jinshi has fully assumed the mantle of leadership. From this day forth, one shall only offer aid when it is truly needed. This situation has been analyzed before, but the number of variables made reaching a safe conclusion impossible. To accomplish a goal, Jinshi must possess both strength and confidence. Revealing the truth to her earlier would only add to her troubles and not aid in improving her abilities. Today was not the ideal moment for our destined battle to unfold, but the Fraxidus has remarkably escalated its arrival. One is prepared to answer any inquiries you may have. The flow of time on Mount Firmament has been restored to its natural pace. But the citizens of Hongzhen must still contend with shortened lifespans should they attempt to depart. Fortunately, with Jinshi's resonance ability, they can stay safe as long as they remain on the mountain. For lack of a better solution, this is the best we can do. Through countless ages, the imposing Mount Firmament stood firm against the storms. But as spring brings thunder and change, one feels a spark of transformation in the air. The people of Hongzhen have a bright future ahead, one that can be steered in the right direction within mere days with proper leadership. One is prepared to answer any inquiries you may have. Your tacit mark. There is something unusual.
It smells like the unnatural smell I smelled in Jinzhou before. Oh, so you must be that sentinel. <laughs> Hello there, big one. Rover, why didn't you wake me up earlier? I got a feeling I missed out on a lot of fun. It does feel similar to me, but there is some difference. This entity is unfamiliar to me, as it resides within your tacit mark. One can only assume you granted it access intentionally. Lord Arbiter, have you heard of the Black Shores? The Black Shores is the starting point of your journey in this world. If you have doubts, this one suggests a visit to that island. Weathering waves ebb and flow. They shall send you back to where you belong. One suggests heading back to Hongzhen to reunite with your companions, Lord Arbiter. With Mount Firmament no longer posing a threat, surely Hong Zhen will undergo significant changes. Mount Firmament glowed with the sun's light, high above the clouds and snow. Then, suddenly, they vanished, revealing a distant blue sky. And amidst it all, stood a white-haired maiden, like a goddess descended from the heavens. With a mere wave of her hand, she brought forth a new season, transforming the streets below. This maiden was none other than the dead infant, now reborn as the Magistrate of Jinjo. When thunder roars in spring's embrace, the sun shall shine upon this place. For only through death and strife can one truly embrace new life. Hmm, I see. Doesn't matter. That's not important for our goal. We have the answers we wanted already. With the second resonance awakening, we will tap into powers that rival the Sentinels. Complete control of the artificial resonator awakening process is within reach. And lastly, about that rover. This trip was worth it. We've collected many wonderful notes, haven't we? It's about time. Get moving. Can't let a certain someone wait too long behind bars. <laughs> 